The following is a presentation of the Match Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the ODU Wrestling Monarch Matcast, a show dedicated to all things related to the Old Dominion Wrestling Program. On the web at monarchmatcast.com. Now, here's your host, three time National Wrestling Writer and Broadcaster of the Year, and 2004 ODU alumnus, Jason Bryant. Media Night. This is the Monarch Matt Cast. So, the guest you might know if you're a Monarch football fan, the first Old Dominion Monarch to ever play in the Super Bowl. The program's 10 years old. And when you came to Old Dominion, did you ever think that you'd have an opportunity to play in, in that big game on Sunday? Uh, honestly, it was it's it's all been a shock to me. And ever since my freshman year, starting uh, as a true freshman at Old Dominion, I, I just never knew that it was going to take me to this point. But I worked hard to get here, and I, I did what I had to do. But and you just it's you got to have a little bit of luck too. And honestly, I, I landed in a great spot at a great time, and and I'm here at the Super Bowl. Uh, Harry Minium wrote that, uh, you know, Taylor Heineke was going to be here with you this week at, at certain points. And, you know, he got a chance to finally play in a regular season football game. I actually saw him here a couple of years ago. I'm a Bucks fan, but I saw him in the preseason game. And I'm watching, all right, my team against a guy playing for my alma mater. And it was a cool thing to see. It's cool to see you in the, in the Super Bowl. But what, is, what made those ODU teams special when you were there? Just the camaraderie we had. I mean, Taylor was my roommate all four years, and we were we we're still best friends to this day. And honestly, just the camaraderie we've had, and those guys are still some of my best friends that I talk to all the time. And, and just being able to play for such an incredible program that had nothing to lose, and we just had all that much to gain. And it, was, it just was an incredible opportunity to be able to play for Old Dominion. How hard is it for you to keep up with you know all the prep work that goes into Sunday to pay attention to the, the old alma mater on Saturdays? You know, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, it's it's a completely different animal uh, playing on Sundays. But you know, it's it's really helped me because I started so young as an old as an old Dominion monarch, and and it really has just boosted my confidence ever since then. So it's it's just a matter of being able to trust yourself and, and trust what you do and, and work hard until you get to the point where you want to be at. Of course, the focus of this show is about college wrestling at Old Dominion, but we're tying it into wrestling as a whole. You obviously you didn't wrestle at Old Dominion, but you did wrestle growing up. I did. I've been I've been wrestling since I was five years old. My uh, cousin Glenn Pritzloff had camps when I was five, and and I'd be participating in all those camps. And uh, I wrestled until I was a junior in high school, and t- until football became my priority. But uh, I love the sport of wrestling. I still watch it to this day. Yeah, because we were talking uh, with Snooski. He wrestled in high school growing up, and then. You know, I'm coming out here trying to get a, a discussion. Okay, we'll get the ODU guy. We'll see if we make it about wrestling. But you said your dad was a state champ? My dad was the first state champion at my high school. My cousin, Glenn, uh, Glenn Pritzloff, was a, a three-time, three-time state champion and a national champion for Penn State. Um, my my uncle actually wrestled at ODU. Dave Lovato actually wrestled at ODU back in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, yeah, my whole family is into wrestling, and you have no idea the background we have in wrestling. Well, I want to know more about it maybe on another episode after we, we, we follow up here. But in terms of the mentality of a wrestler versus the mentality of a long – I mean, first of all, what is the mentality of a long snapper? You know, it's kind of like wrestling, honestly. You're going out there, and it's just you out there. You're the one controlling that ball, and you're the one um, snapping it, to, and it's all up to you to, to decide whether it's going to be a good snap or not. Same with wrestling. It's just you out there. You're going out there uh, and wrestling another opponent, and it's, it's man-to-man, and, and that's how it is. We'll let these guys jump on in real quick, so we'll hang tight with Rick Lovato. Middletown South is in the house. That's right. I'm a Jersey boy. Is that right? How exciting is it for you to be representing Middletown South here at the uh, Super Bowl? You know, it's incredible to just be able to represent everyone in New Jersey and especially Middletown, my hometown. I've I've been talking to guys and uh, girls all week back home. Just really nice being able to hear from them, all the support that I have back home. It's incredible to be here. To have a chance to bring the Eagles their first ever Super Bowl, what would that mean? You know, it, it would be history. You know, it's it's. I can't even really put it in my head of what it will feel like. But you know, it, it's it's something that I, I really hope that we can we can dominate out there on on Sunday. And 
you know, bring a bring a Super Bowl home to not only Philadelphia but to Old Dominion and to my hometown of Middletown because we there we we have yet to bring home one for all three. And finally, is there something about a New Jersey guy? Is there is there a New Jersey toughness that kind of comes along with with being a player from the Garden State? Absolutely, New, Jer- <laughs> New Jersey has a lot of a lot of uh, like respect for itself, and and honestly, I, I treat it that way, and uh, I just love being a, being a, excuse me being able to be here and represent. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there. In 2007, I sat in a military club okay. in Italy watching the Super Bowl with Michael Strahan's brother, and they weren't favored to win. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. And same same position here. So how do you feel about that? You know, I, I, I don't even believe in the whole underdog thing anymore just because we've been, we've been treated like that all year, and we go out there and we play our game. We don't we don't treat our opponents any differently than, than anyone else. We just go out there and play our to our best ability because we can control what we need to, and, and that's it. And we just got to go out there and dominate and win. What kind of advice would you give to young military kids who are looking to maybe uh, play a professional sport, whether it be football or something else? You know, it, it's hard work and sacrifice. You have to be able to give up the things that you want to do with friends and stuff to do on the weekends to go out there and, and practice your, your position, your, your whatever whatever sport you're playing. You need to be able to have that mentality that you're going to do whatever it takes to get as far as you want to. Well, we're here. Can you send out a special shout-out to the troops and families overseas who will be watching on AFN? I. Thank you guys so much for all your service. Honestly, it's it's incredible to be able to be here and re- represent our country. Uh, and you represent our country. Uh, I thank you so much for your service. And we're going to bring home a Super Bowl for you guys. As we're continuing on, it's like this is what's this what's this media day been like for? I mean, this is day one of media week, and already you know I'm, we're we're talking O to you, but you've you've got New York media, you've got you know Armed Forces Network. I mean. Did they prep you for this? What did they prep you about? <laughs> Not really, honestly. It's, it's kind of a shock to be able to see all these people coming up to me and, and asking me questions because as a long snapper, I'm not used to that. I'm not getting a lot of questions asked of me, but, you know, it, it's awesome to be able to just represent uh, my school, my hometown, uh, the Eagles. You know, I, I just I go out here and do what I do because I love this sport and I love representing the people that, that I get to represent. Hi, uh, I'm from the BBC in the UK. I just wondered if you could just tell a global audience just the significance of Sunday to you and to the team and to the city of Philadelphia. You know, it, it's a game that I've been watching ever since I was I was an infant, honestly. And and this game is, meant, means everything to me. I've watched every single Super Bowl since I was a kid. I've always been a, a football fan. Um, but honestly, it's just it's a game that you can't describe because it's it's such a big platform and and there's it, there's so much hype around it that it's the biggest biggest sport. A sporting event in the world it's it's crazy to, to be able to think that i'm a part of it and and i'm just so happy to be here so is your over overriding emotion excitement nervousness any fear uh no not so much fear or nervousness I, i'm excited because we still got a long week ahead of us and there's a lot of distractions to come but honestly i'm just going to keep a level head and just and focus on what i need to do on sunday and go bring bring a super bowl home to to philadelphia and there has been that underdog tag that has come with the team throughout, and, and you've used it to your advantage. Do you think that will play any sorts of significance come Sunday? You know it will because our team has just rallied behind it at this point. Uh, we've, we've just persevered through, through everything. People have told us what we could and couldn't do all year long, and we've told, told those people to to get out of here you know like the, we've just done what we had to do to to get to this position and we're, and we're ready to just finish it off this is the last game of the year uh for the next seven months and we're going to treat it that way and we're going to go out there and we're just going to dominate very politely put and good luck for sunday thank you very much thanks uh the brits they're so polite with their questions i love it i love it I was over there in, in london in 2012 for the olympics and uh saw some interesting cab conversations but Back to the mentality of the long snapper, and I, I, meant, I mentioned this to, to Ference, who plays line for the Patriots. He's on their practice squad right now. The mentality, or I guess you said in the paper you like to be anonymous. Wrestlers tend to toil in their anonymity because it's a sport that doesn't get a whole lot of you know, media attention. Although the long snapper gets very little media attention. I mean, Harry even said he didn't even think he'd interviewed once during college. What are the similarities between wrestling and long snapping? Just, the, 
like you said right there, the anonymous factor where you don't want to be noticed. You're going out there and you're doing your job. It's you versus the man in front of you, and it's me versus the ball. I have to snap a clean ball, and I have to go downfield, protect, uh, go make a tackle. Just like wrestling, you, you have to have that, that laser focus and that just I'm going to dominate mentality because that's what it takes to, to be successful at this job. Is it kind of weird when you look at your position going, if, if you're on the field, it, it can be good, and if you're off the field, it can be bad, and it can also be good. If you're off the field, well, they're driving, and they need you for the extra point or the long field goal. But if, if you're getting used a lot for punts, you're like, man, we're not having a good day. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's an emotional roller coaster for sure when you're sitting on the sidelines and you really can't control the game yourself. You just kind of have to wait out until your opportunity comes. And whether it's a punt, whether it's a field goal, you just got to go out there and do what you do. I mean, punt, punt's just as important as field goals. You got to flip the field. You got to put them in a position where they can't score. And on field goals, we need to, we need the points, and, and that's how you win games. And, and that's why I love doing what I do because I can, I can help win this game. On one of those field goals, I think the highlight, I think it was on the on the, uh, the ODU message boards. One was like, check out Lovato running down the field. You were like running like hands up. You beat everybody down. You almost beat the, the, the ball through the uprights. I mean, you just get really excited out there. I mean, is that an attitude of this team, or is it just your general excitement about, I'm in the game? <laughs> <laughs> it's, my, it's definitely my attitude just towards this team, man. I, I'm so excited just to be a part of this. I never knew that I'd have an opportunity to play in the NFL, so I, I just take it one snap at a time and i enjoy every minute of it long snapping let's just dial it back a little bit i mean how do you fall in love with such a position you know i guess people are asking like how you fall in love with wrestling because you're getting you're basically if you're if you're not any good you're getting beat up by a lot of people you're getting hit right off the, every snap right off the right off the whistle and it's it's not a glamorous position so i i guess there's a niche for everyone and, and you found one that's you've loved you've, you've loved and turned into a career and the super bowl but what was it about the particular position that you were drawn to? Just the ability to be able to perfect this job that not many people can do. I'm one of 32 jobs in the entire world. And to be able to say that is incredible. Um, you know, it just ever since I started doing it when I, was, when I was a kid, when I was in eighth grade, and I started going to camps my junior year of high school and really learning the, the art of long sapping and the technique. And there's, it's just, it becomes a passion when you want to work towards that that thing that you want to be the best at. And, and it's just incredible to have this position and, and be, in, Again, be in this game right now. They prepare you for these type of questions. I mean, you're getting wrestling questions. But golf? I didn't expect that. Yeah, I, I haven't golfed too long. I had, I had to uh, make a few things up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing they didn't know that. Yeah, but that's okay because, you know, I'm not expecting any of this. So i just just making the most out of it right now. Now, you mentioned your uncle wrestled at Oldman. How much did that play a role in you actually being aware of the school in their whole recruiting process? Yeah, ever since I started getting recruited there, honestly, I, I never heard of Old Dominion University. And then I talked to my uncles who both went there, one wrestled, one who didn't, uh, both on my dad's side, who were both wrestlers. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just something that they talked to me about. I was like, hey, this is a great school. You need to go down there, check it out, and, and really see it for yourself. And, and obviously it was much different when they went to school there back in the 80s and 90s. But, um, but yeah, I just loved it ever since I went down there. The very first time I was down there, I knew it was a place for me. How much has the school changed from, you know, obviously I started there in 1997, so it's, I was back uh, for the Hall of Fame in uh, November. And every time I walk on campus, having living out here and then going home, it's like, Man, when did this building come up? I mean, where's the? I mean, the field house is. I don't even know if you knew there was a field house, but there's a parking lot now. There's the quad there. I mean, the the changes as a student going through that. That's just got to be really cool to see, not just from an athletic standpoint, but from man, they're really putting a lot of money in education here too. Oh, absolutely. I, the, all those buildings were still going up when I was when I was in school and when I was a freshman, sophomore, all the way to my senior year. I just see more and more buildings going up, houses along 43rd Street. Um, it was really incredible. And then coming back last off season, there's more buildings that I didn't even know that were going up since the last time I'd been there, like a few months before. And honestly, it's just incredible to see how how quickly it's growing and and the, the modernization they're doing to that entire campus. You've got the you got the sub background now. You got the long snapping no one the, the career's over what are you going to do with putting your old dominion degree to work uh you know i really want to do something with management especially in the in the food business and i know it's tough but uh it's just what i've known my entire life is the food business and honestly making the right investment and and being able to go out and do that and and do what i love after fo my football career is over so you got the the DraftKings guys kind of shadowing i wonder when DraftKings is going to add a long snapper to its its daily 
Oh, I did. Well, the thing is, it's they're not going to. My show, my people aren't listening to your show, and vice versa. I think we're cool. No, as, as we're going. But uh, finishing up, if you had to say one thing to people that were considering Old Dominion or alumni that are that are rooting for some people, this is harder than others. Rooting for the Eagles, just because you, you're at Old Dominion. You know, this is kind of tough for some of us. I'm a Bucks fan. I'm not an Eagles fan, and it's going to be hard for me on Sunday. But I'm pulling for you because you're an Old Dominion monarch. What do you got to say to them about your career at Old Dominion, the support you've received, and uh, and at the Snapping Life on Twitter? You know, the, the past couple of years and just all the support I've gotten from that school and from all the coaches, all the ODU alumni, uh, play, former players, play, current players, it's just incredible to have that experience and to be able to represent Old Dominion uh, at the Super Bowl and hopefully bring that bring a Super Bowl uh, trophy back home to, to Old Dominion. You know, it's it's just th- I thank you so much for all that you've done for me and, and really just uh, – Go Big Blue and go Eagles. We're going to bring one home for you guys. Hey, guys, Jason Bryant popping in here just to give you an update about this next section of this interview. Uh, Andy Hamilton from TrackWrestling.com has been a friend of mine and and colleague in the sport of wrestling for a long time. And uh, part of our charge here over the course of opening night was to interview wrestlers. So there's a a couple more wrestlers that we're interviewing that you can find out on. uh, Find those interviews at MattTalkOnline.com. Most of them will be on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. This one, of course, on the OD Wrestling Monarch Madcast, so there will be some repeats of some of the questions that Andy asked because he was not uh, next to me when I initially did the interview. So I went and tracked him down. It's like, hey, Andy, you got to talk to this guy, and uh, it just it just happened to work out that you know I didn't know Rick had wrestled, and that's something that, that rarely gets by me, and it actually ended up turning out to be uh, really really good for this particular part of the episode. So now here's uh, here's Andy Hamilton from Track Wrestling. I've got a couple more questions that I've equipped in here, but uh, if, in case you hear some of the repeats, it's because Andy had not had a chance to get uh, Rick on the first side. Wrestling here at Super Bowl Media Day with Philadelphia Eagles long snapper Rick Lovato, and uh, you've got a history in the sport, wrestling. I do, I do. I wrestled up into my junior year of high school until football became my priority. I wrestled uh, 215 in high school, and my dad was the first state champion at my, at my high school. My cousin, three-time state champion Glenn Pritzloff, who a lot of people know, who's also a national champion at uh, Penn State. And then my two cousins, uh, I mean, my two uncles. Uh, one wrestled at uh, Old Dominion and... Um, yeah, and that's my experience with wrestling. I, I've been watching it ever since I was a baby. What did you appreciate most about those battles? I appreciated the the amount of hard work and discipline I learned from all of those times that I was in the gym uh, wrestling, and not not with just other other teammates, but my dad. My dad taught me a lot about just. Uh, working hard until the point until you get to where you want and honestly wrestling is what really pushed me harder than football has ever in my life and uh, really just teaching me that overall lesson of, of just hard work and discipline what was the most rewarding moment you had on the mat my m- most rewarding moment would have to be uh was actually uh, losing to a guy, but I lost to a guy who was uh, ranked third in the nation by one point. Um, uh, and that was the best match I ever wrestled. I know I lost, but it was still a great match and um, and really helped the team win that in- overall match itself. Who was that guy? Uh, I honestly can't tell you the name right now, but uh, he was a Jersey guy, and he ended up finishing fourth that year in, in, uh, in that uh, state championship. I'm blanking here a little bit, JB. <laughs> Did you make the I, I never did. No, no. I actually uh, tore my shoulder um, uh, my junior year in districts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not wrestle my senior year. I, yeah, like I said, I was strictly into football after I was done with wrestling and my shoulder my junior year. So, I've, so that stuff carries over to to what you do now. Is there any? Is there much carryover from what oh, you learned then? Absolutely. And, yeah. So um, just the, the overall work ethic when it comes to working out in general, like uh, wrestling workouts were so much harder than any other workouts that I ever did. So being able to take that over and, and seeing how difficult those were and, and doing what I do now, it's not that it, what I do now is easy, but I, I, it gives me that mentality that I've done worse than this. Wrestling was so much harder, so I'm going to keep pushing until I can't do it anymore. What's this day been like? It's kind of wild. It's incredible. I've been getting questions from people that I have no right answer to, but you know, it's just an amazing opportunity to be here and and representing everyone, everyone who's back home, everyone who at Old Dominion, just uh, just to be able to be here and, and be at the Super Bowl. What's the most unexpected question you got today? 
Uh, my the most unexpected question would be, what was my best golf impersonation if I scored a touchdown? So that really didn't make much sense to me, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I got on a knee and I rolled the dice. So I don't know. I, I just that was that was what I could think of at the moment. I didn't, didn't want to take too long, but. That's what it was. Did you go to any Old Dominion matches in college? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Scotty Festejo was a guy that uh, wrestled at Long Branch where my mom works. And uh, there was a good amount of ODU, um, ODU guys who wrestled in New Jersey. So I got I got a, on a really good friendship basis with a lot of them. And I still talk to some of them now, like uh, Chris McCotty, who was a great wrestler for ODU. Um, still, still he, I think believe he's doing MMA right now. So, uh, yeah, a lot of those guys from back at ODU I'm still talking to this day. Did you ever think wrestling might be an option for you in college? No, and just because I, I heard how much more difficult it was in college than it was in high school, so I wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, but because I love what I do um, with with football, and and I honestly wrestling is a sacrifice that I don't know how those guys make, and, and I, I give all the respect in the world to those guys. How did you wind up getting into long snapping? Uh, you know, it was just something I did because I was a center ever since I was in eighth grade. Um, I saw I could snap the ball, and I was a pitcher, so I had a good throwing arm. Um, so I just so I did it, and I was good at it. Um, so I started going to these camps in junior junior year of high school and really learning the art and technique of, of long snapping because there, there is one. Um, learning how to throw it, learning the uh, follow-through process, uh, learning how to use your body, just like wrestling, learning how to use your body to the maximum um, angles and efforts that you can get out of it. So uh, that's really what that really interested me in long snapping. You were snapping a sandwich over here, weren't you? I was <laughs> that what you were? a sandwich. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, little take there too. But it, it was all for fun. So have you gotten interviewed by the guy in the dog mask? I have not been interviewed by the guy in the dog mask. Or the shark suit. Uh, or the shark suit. I, I'm still waiting on some interesting characters to come up to me and, and start asking questions. So I got a long night ahead of me. He gets the Golf Channel, us, and DraftKings, Andy. Now, I do one thing I forgot to ask, and because uh, I've interviewed him now four different times tonight. What your best impersonation? Of maybe Steve Martin, the wrestling coach at Old Dominion. Oh man, uh, I don't know if I. I've, I know he's got a, a raspy, higher voice, so I, I don't know if I can match that. Uh, and hearing some of those those calls that when I went to the matches, it's like. Oh man, like that's two, that's two, that's two. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's pretty funny watching and watching him uh, do his thing at at ODU. Ended on a quick note: pork roll or Taylor ham? Pork roll. And you'd already said the soda in the pop. Soda. Patch or Genos? Genos. Thanks, Rick. Good luck. Thank you very much. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.